Peace. Good afternoon. What's going on? This is your girl French from 35 and Fact. Today's topic is going to be dealing with Black History Month, but this is the time that we take to honor those who have done Black women don't receive a lot of credit for the work of every contribution community. And it's true, a lot of times black women don't receive a lot of credit and they don't earn a lot of recognition. So, what I try to do here on my channel, I try to make it my business to where I can be able to cover a lot of things that has not been exposed to the public about our people and their history. So it's quite sad and it's my strange that we have to go through this day. The only way you can be able to find out about your history, about who you are and about your ancestors and where you come from is through doing your own research <laughs> and, and looking up information for yourself. So you not taught these things in school. You know what I'm saying? So, but on Women History Month, which is why I glad that we have this holiday or this monthly holiday. Well, not monthly, but you know, every March is the women's month, women history. Because it takes a time out to honor and recognize the women that has done a lot of work. And so it said that black women don't receive a lot of credit for the work that has been contributed in the community. You know, but anyways, I want to do this video uh, pertaining to this topic. And today I'm going to talk about a woman from South Carolina. And she was from the low country part of South Carolina. She was a nurse and a midwife. Okay. This lady had her own clinic. She was catering to African-American women who was in poverty. Now, if you grew up in the country, you're going to see that there's a lot of poverty stricken. It's, it's poverty stricken. It's not the income levels are not very high. There's not much access to health care facilities, especially. And it's more like rural towns. So. And this woman made her contribution. She put her work on the line. She put her life on the line for this. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and get started. Okay. All right. So who is Miss Made E. Collin? Miss Made E. Collin. All right, this is Miss Maude E. Collin. So, Miss Maude E. Collin was born November 8th, 1898, in Quincy, Florida. And she died January 23rd, 1990, in Pineville, South Carolina. She was a nurse midwife in the South Carolina country for over six years. Her work was brought to national attention in W. Eugene Spells. Photo essays, Nurse Midwife, published in Life in December of December 3rd, 1951. Now, she was born in Quincy, Florida. She had 12 sisters and orphaned by the age of six, meaning that she lost both her parents. She was brought up in the home of her uncle, Dr. William J. Gunn, a physician in Tallahassee, Florida. Callan had her primary education at the St. Michael's and All Angels, was it Pearl, Pearl Chattel School? After that, she attended the Florida A University in Tallahassee, which was in 1919 and later a course at Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. Monday, I also graduated from the Georgia Infirmary in 1921. So the Georgia Infirmary was basically the school people the nurses. And 
the facilities no longer there. Yeah, the facilities no longer there. So schools for people want to become nurses and the nursing however the school no longer there. Uh, but then he has to start down. Yeah, that's where she went to get her degree. Okay. It says, Colin devoted her life to nursing in some of the most poverty stricken areas in southern United States. By 1923, she had set up her own practice as a nurse midwife in Berkeley County, one of the poorest in South Carolina at the time. She received additional training from Georgia Infirmary in Savannah and in tuberculosis care at Homer G. Phillips Hospital in St. Louis, Missouri. So she was married to William Dora Collin in 1921. They moved to Pineville, South Carolina when she was called as a missionary nurse. Now this is where she worked as a nurse. So as a nurse midwife, a year after graduating from Georgia Infirmary, Collin moved to Pineville, Berkeley County, South Carolina as a Episcopal missionary nurse. The position was intended to be temporary. She was one of only, yeah, she was one of only nurse, nine nurse midwives in South Carolina at the time. Colin operated a community clinic out of her home, which was miles from any hospital. It is estimate she delivered between 600 and 800 babies in her 62 years of practice. In addition to providing medical services, Colin taught women from the community to be midwives. She provided in home services to an area of some 400 square miles, bending with muddy roads, serving as doctor, dietitian, psychologist, bell goer, and friends to thousands of poor, most of them desperately poor patients. Only two percent of them, only two percent of whom were white. Condition in Berkeley County were difficult. At the edge of Hell Hole Swamp in Pineville, houses were still lit by oil lamps, not electricity, not having power lines, meant no telephones, and people went to town by wagon or buggy. Nurses Marday recalled that there were only two cars in Berkeley County and none of the roads were paved. Many of her patients arrived at her home in icy cars in the middle of the night. Colin frequently had to park her car and walk through muds, woods, and creeks to reach her patient. And that's a lot. Going your way out as a nurse at nighttime, going through creeks, woods, just to meet with your patient. And so she was in an area that was extremely poor, poverty stricken. They did not have access to capital. So imagine who was the majority in those population. Most of them were blacks. And it goes, it goes on to say in 1936, Colin joined the Berkeley County Health Department as a public health nurse. Her job included training midwives through the county. She taught young black women the proper practicing in prenatal care labor, support, baby delivery, and handling of newborns. Her duties included vaccination, examination, and keeping records on the children's eyes and teeth. In 1943, Marday Collin was sent to a six-month course at Maternity Center at Tuskegee Institute and received training that was almost as advanced as a doctor's. Because of this, Collin became the second nurse midwife in South Carolina. And on December 3rd, 1952, Life magazine published a 12-page photographic essays of Collins' work by the celebrated photojournalist W. Eugene Smith. Smith spent weeks with Collins at her clinic and on her rounds in the community. Smith is quoted as saying the photographs he took of Nurse Made were the most rewarding of all his work and that Collins was the most completely fulfilled person I ever known. On um, publication of the photo essay, readers donated more than $20,000 to support Collins' work in Pineville. As a result, the Marday E. Collins Clinic opened in 1953. Collins ran the clinic until her retirement from public health duties in 1971. The Marday E. Collins Clinic reopened as a senior center serving meals and providing comfort until Collins' death in 1990. Work with senior 
citizens. After her retirement in 1971, Collin petitioned county officials to start a senior citizen nutrition site, which operated starting in 1980 out of the clinic. As a volunteer, Collin managed the center, which cooked and delivered meals five days a week and provided car service to seniors needing transportation. In 1983, a CBS news segment on the road with Charles Carrot. Stated at 85 minutes, Made serves meals each weekday to some 50 elderly residents, most of them younger than she is. She is quoted as having said on turning down an invitation from President, President Reagan to visit the White House. You just can't call me up and ask me to be somewhere I've got to do my job. She continued her work until her death in 1990. So... These are the awards that she has received for her work in the community, uh, for her philanthropy. So I won't go through the list of that. And then there's a quote. It says, let me live in my house by the side of the road and be a friend to men. Marte E. Collin. All right. And there's the references at the bottom of the page if you guys want to check that out. So. That's the information on her. She turned down an invitation by President Ronald Reagan. She wasn't the only one. There was many others that have done it. Also, uh, Marvel Collins was another one that turned down his invitation as well because she was working as a teacher. She had her own preparatory schools and all of that. So she turned down his work too. But yes, this woman continued on with her philanthropy work, her community effort until it was time for her to leave the planet. And she left with the trademark. She left with a trademark and she was always remembered as the not only a nurse, but also a midwife and a, a caregiver to the community. So it wasn't just about money. Okay. See, a lot of people, they go to school to become nurses because they know the money is there. And yes, I'm not saying that money is not important because it is, but a lot of times it's not about money. It's about doing what's best for the people, doing because you're passionate about it. And this was her passion. This was her passion, okay? This wasn't just about generating income. All right, so I want to uh, show you a picture of her. Mm -hmm. See? That's a picture of Miss Marty Collins. All right, and then going over here to GreensvilleOnline.com. All right, that's her again. So it says, this is Greenville News. Okay, and this came out February the 4th of 2015. Molly Collin was a hero nurse midwife, Donna Isabel Walker. So say Marty Collin de dedicated her life to helping women in poverty, taking care of their health and their families. In turn, Life Magazine dedicated 12 pages to Collins' work and brought it to the attention of the nation. All right, so it goes on further down saying that the clinic opened in 1953 in Pineville. Colin retired in 1971, although the clinic operated until 1986. After, after retirement, she turned her attention to providing meals for a senior citizen. And she received honorary degrees from Clemson and Medical University of South Carolina. All right, so again, she continued her work she went from doing midwife work to provide for senior citizens. 
until she had passed away in the 1990s. Oops. Mm. And then also her clinic project. So Marty Collin Clinic. All right, this was the clinic right here. That's the inside of the building. Now, down here, it says, Colin started a midwife practice in her home, which lasted for 13 years. At the time, she was just one of the nine professionally trained nine midwives in the state. This area of Upper Berkeley County was once home to many plantation and after the civil war former slaves were left without access to basic services such as medical care this isolation lasted through the jim crow era and persists to a large extent today by all counts pineville was remote with most of its citizens lacking any means of transportation okay so this is the inside and there it is And then it goes on to say in 1935, the Social Security Act established the Division of Maternal and Child Health. Callan was the was then employed as a public health nurse for Berkeley County. During this time, she trained hundreds of women in midwife midwifery to ensure further dis, dispersion of the health care providers in the state. In the 1940s, Dr. Hella Sh Sheriff also joined the Division of Maternal and Child Health and worked with Collins to further educate midwives to provide medical care. Together, they secured the use of the historic Penn Center on St. Helena Island for their Midwife Training Institute. The program required midwives to return every four years to renew their license as a form of continuing education. All right, so this is her right here training upcoming women to become midwives right here. And then this is a picture of her again. All right, that's a picture of her. And this is a picture of her standing with a patient, okay, who just gave birth to a child. And these are her two kids right here. All right, so here's the woman again. There, there she go. And it goes on to say, because people were unable to travel, she went to them often walking miles through woods and creeks to get to their patient. It is estimated that she delivered 600 to 800 babies during her lifetime. This work gave her nickname Angel in Twilight. All right, so here's the historical markers. And these are her descendants. Okay, this came out in 2017, November 8th of 2017. That's her historical marker right there. All right, so the update is one of the plans for the future use of the clinic was to be an open air museum of sorts, leaving the shell of the building without roofing for people to explore. As these 2018 photos illustrate, the roof has been removed, leaving the walls, windows, and doors. Informational panels and cleanups are in future plans for the site. Okay, so this is a documentary on South Carolina ETV. It's called Angel in Twilight. All 
All right, so that's all the information that's available for this topic. And I hope to hear from you guys. Um, if you guys like the channel, go ahead and subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the channel, share the videos, all the great stuff. I really appreciate those who have been supporting for a while. Until then, please take it easy. Peace and power elevation be to all of you. This is your girl, Tiffany, and I am logging off, and I'll connect with you guys later. All right, then. Peace.